Yo, what's up guys, Boss here, and I'm back with another YouTube video. This time, we're going to be playing some top ladder using the best Lava Hound deck in the game right now. So the reason why I think this is the best Lava Hound deck is it's what I see the most on ladder and in competitive the last, I would say, couple months. Inferno Drag is really good because lots of the popular decks in the meta, just to name a few, like that RG Cycle deck, um, you know, usually it has Skeleton Dragons and Hunter, which means they don't ever set for the Inferno Drag, which means it gets so much value against the RG. And then there's also some other decks, uh, like a lot of decks have the Knight, like Wallbreaker, Cycle Knight, Hog, Knight, Bomb Tower, which the Inferno Drag gets tons of value because it's really difficult for them to deal with it. I feel like arrows are good because if you're against log bait or mortar bait, it's really difficult to win if you have fireball, whereas arrows keep your cycle a little bit faster and just have a larger radius, so it's much easier to beat those things. I thought I like having the miner in the deck because it's pretty helpful to be able to snipe musketeers or e-wizzes, just as an example if your opponent plays them on defense. And it's also good as a tank, you know, obviously for the Lava Pups, or you could even go for a minor balloon push in the opposite lane of your Lava Hound if they use their air counters on your Lava Hound in one lane, you go opposite lane with the minor balloon. They often don't expect it. Before we get into the first game, if you guys want to support me, you can use my creator code. Boss, really appreciate all you guys using my code. You can use it in any Supercell game, and it means a lot to those of you who do use my code. So we're at about 1700 right now. We're going to work our way up. Haven't been playing too much ladder recently because it is still fairly early in the season um i've been playing grand challenges and you know i as you as some of you know i have school now so some school homework and then i'm also practicing practicing for crl so ladder especially you know beginning middle of the season not really one of my priorities but um i do like playing it um you know, when I can, like when I have time. But usually I grind it the most last uh, couple weeks of the season. I'm just going to zap. Uh, he's probably going to zap the Inferno Drag, but... Oh, he didn't. Interesting. So this is actually quite good because he got barely any damage on my tower. He, I think he didn't need to zap the Inferno Drag. That was a waste, because I guess he wasn't paying attention. His Musketeer actually was shooting it. Okay, I'm just going to arrow, finish off the tower. And then we can just go for another Lava Hound in the right lane. I forgot if I mentioned this at the beginning of the video. The other reason why you guys might like this deck, if you guys are looking for like an easy deck to play, 100% recommend this. Um, if, a, if I'm rating this deck on a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being... The deck is really skillful, one being like it isn't at all, I'd give this a two, so that's good to keep in mind, I suppose. I don't know if that surround with the Barbarians was that good, but on the plus side, he did just use his Fireball, so I mean, this is pretty good, I guess. You know, we're getting so much damage on his tower. I'm going to even zap just to finish off the Skeleton Dragons. And we're going to get his tower pretty low. Uh, not quite in arrow range or zap and arrow range, but pretty low to the point where we can just, you know, play same lane as him. Hope he doesn't take our tower. And, you know, and then it, you know, at the very least right now we do have a... You know the advantage i would say but there's a chance he could take our tower but we'll try to stop it from happening we need to what we need to try to do is space everything out okay so he doesn't take our tower the sparky i think did splash on our tower but he didn't take it um i'm just gonna lava hound double lava hound and he's gonna he still has to take our tower so i'm an inferno drag in the pocket looks like he gave up we pretty much won that just at the start. Um, and did we Lava First Play that game? I think I may have. I, and I forgot if I already mentioned it, but Lava First Play is actually um, what you want to do with this deck. Doesn't matter what your starting hand is. Go for Lava First Play if you have it in cycle. Um, yep, that's what I do. And again, that's why the deck is very easy to play. You can Lava First Play the game. And if you get punished and lose your tower, it often doesn't even matter because you can just play a balloon behind the Lava Hound and come back very quickly. 
Um, with this deck, it almost never ends in a one tower situation where, like, you take a tower or they only take yours. Usually with this deck, it's often three crown games, two tower situations almost always. Very rarely you'll have a game where, you know, you take one of their towers and they don't take one of yours. It's pretty unlikely. So I'm just going to ignore that. I didn't really want to play Barbarians on it. I will zap, though, just to make sure he doesn't take the tower. But the thing with this deck that's pretty important is you don't really want to overspend on defense. And what I mean by that is, like, if there's something... If you already play a Lava Hound, and if you... And if they play, like, he just did a Dark Prince the other lane... It's not really a good idea to play Barbarians, which is a 5 for 4 trade, and then you have pretty much nothing to support your Lava Hound. It's better to just, you know, let them get their damage in, and ideally they don't take Tower, but if they damage it a little bit, it's fine. So what I mean is, like, if you can get positive trades on defense, then it's worth defending, but if you have to spend more than what they played, it's not worth it, if that makes sense kind of that way for most lava loon decks because if you, you know the lava hound is you know your primary tank win condition and if you're playing it and then not able to support it that's kind of a problem so he's gonna have freeze i kind of want to get rid of this ewiz it's kind of annoying uh we do and we currently have a pretty solid we're in a solid position right now. I'm going to minor least predictable position just to kind of finish off the tower. It is double elixir, so I am, you know, even though I said you don't typically want to spend more elixir to save your tower, in this situation it's okay because it is double elixir now. I didn't have a lava hound down, so it's pretty, it makes sense for me to do it. But if I had, if I had played a lava hound, it wouldn't have at all made sense. I'm just going to set up with a Lava Hound in the back, kind of arrow all that just to make sure it doesn't get too much damage on my king or anything like that. Barbarians. And this is going to be a pretty interesting game, this ending. I'm going to Barbarians to try to block the Inferno Drag, potentially. <laughs> nice arrows. Okay, this game is going to be pretty weird. He's got Inferno Drag, Ewiz, Freeze, just a lot of defensive cards that we kind of got to watch out for. But at the same time, it isn't too, too difficult to defend his graveyards. I think because he was so aggressive, I'm going to go ahead and apply some pressure here. I don't expect us to get a Balloon Connection, but Death Damage really does add up, and... I'm, like, pretty happy with getting death damage. And he's just going to go for a graveyard freeze without playing his tank, which is very, very odd. Um, Pretty bad Ewiz as well. I think we're just going to go in here for a balloon and a miner. I'm going to play barbarians. We're just going to go pretty aggressive because he was aggressive himself used his freeze and ooh, i was actually pretty sure we were going to get a balloon connection there but just barely he was able to hold off and i think we're okay because we do have zap that's going to be close but we're fine crazy game crazy deck overall i wasn't really sure who was going to win that 
um, when we got into that situation, the two tower situation, because, you know, it's not too difficult for me to stop his graveyards, but at the same time, it's not hard for him to stop my lava pushes, because he's got Inferno Drag, Freeze, Ewiz, as well as uh, the Goblin Hunt, which is a great distraction for the Inferno Drag, but we managed to find a way to break through, and this death damage of the balloon piled up. Uh, but yeah, that's sometimes what happens. Like, you, um, you're you not always going to get a balloon connection. And that's why the miner's good in the deck for additional tower chip. And just getting death damage can be good. Alright, here we go. We found another game. We do have lava in our starting hand. I'm just going to lava. This time it's a little bit more risky because we don't have barbarians or inferno dragon rotation. But... You still, regardless of your cycle, always want to be playing Lava First Play. Everyone I see using this deck on ladder always plays Lava First Play if they have it in cycle. I'm not going to balloon behind this. Instead, I'm going to play Skeleton Dragons because he probably has Logbait Inferno. So what I'm going to do... Wow, this could actually... Hold on, this is actually pretty good because... You know what? I'm going to balloon this lane because he has to still defend the Lava Pups. That's fine. Okay. I'm thinking the play is Lava Hound in the back right now. And if he pressures us, we still have Barbarians in Cycle. No Inferno in Cycle. So that's the main reason why I decided to Lava. We can Inferno Drag this. I just want to Arrow the Princess, get rid of it. And then we can go for Skeleton Dragons. And then Miner. I, I, I don't know, he's he's going to have a difficult time defending this. Yeah, that's the main reason why um, I defended his my tower. I didn't actually expect him to get so much damage on it. I thought we were going to defend it with more um, HP, but I guess it's still fine. Okay, nice. That was perfectly placed so it didn't splash. I'm going to Barbarians. I'm going to ignore the Goblin Barrel. Just going to Inferno Drag. Arrow. There's the Inferno. So let's get a Zap ready on top of that. If I waited slightly longer to Zap, I probably could have gotten more of the Goblins. But I guess it's still good. We have the Lava Hound on his tower. I'm going to go for a Balloon in the pocket to hopefully tank for the Lava Pups and force a response out of him. He's going to go Rocket. That's a 6 for 5 trade, and the Lava Pups are still getting damage. I think that's good game, most likely. Yeah, that's GG. It's really nice and easy when you have Lava in your starting hand. I feel like this deck a little bit relies on luck of starting hand. Like, if you don't have Lava in your starting play, or starting hand, you could lose all because of that. But if you do have Lava in your starting hand, I feel like you're more likely to win. So it's it's pretty it's pretty weird, but um, okay. Again, we have lava in our starting hand. If you don't have lava in your starting hand, best thing you can do is zap and air or arrow their tower. Um, okay, so we're both gonna lava. Now the question is: is do I defend or just support mine? If I had a balloon in the cycle, I would have just ignored his lava. But because I don't, I'm gonna inferno drag and just okay. Kind of want the, his balloon to go in front first. Well, this is kind of funny because we're both using the same thing. What's good for us, though, is that I actually think my balloon gets an extra hit just because... Notice what I did. Did you see how I, I played my... Whoa, why is he... Minoring with the Inferno Drag? I don't think that that was a good play at all. 
We're just going to finish off his tower here. If he defends it, it's a very bad play. And if I were him, I wouldn't. Yeah. Okay. So he just spent six elixir, tried saving the tower, and he didn't even save the tower. That's exactly why I just said it would be a really bad play if he decided to defend. And not only did he try to defend, he failed. So... I'm just going to arrow that. And then we do kind of need to make sure that we're not getting three crowned here. So I'm just going to zap. Um, and this is kind of bad. Like, even though he went for that bad play on defense, he somehow, some way came back. And somehow, some way just won right now. Well, that's, um, a little unlucky. I guess, um, because he spent six elixir on trying to defend it and he didn't defend and I was up an elixir. So I thought lava in the back was good, but I guess the barbs and balloon at the bridge worked out for him. All right, we're just going to lava again. Okay, this guy's got lava too. Um, okay, well, this time since I have Balloon, I'm just going to support the Balloon. That was, see, the mirror matches are a little weird. You can see the mirror matches don't take much skill. He kind of, like, made a mistake, and then I enjoy my Elixir Advantage by going Lava, you know, in the back, and then he just goes Barb's Balloon at the bridge. It's kind of like, I don't know. Of course... Of course, it's easy to say that because, you know, I'm upset that I lost, but it's kind of like, I don't know, seems, seems a little cheap to me, but I guess you got to do what works in order to get the win. I mean, I respect it, but not what I thought was going to happen. And this guy just drops a balloon at the bridge. So... If it works, it works, I guess. If our opponents play random balloons at the bridge, I guess we can too. I guess I'm going to go Barbarians too. I guess... You know, judging by the last game in this game, the way you gotta play is do some really dumb plays, like Balloon at the Bridge and Barb's Balloon at the Bridge randomly. Clearly that's what you gotta do. And we're going to lose again. We were like winning versus everyone, but like losing all the mirror matches. It's because the mirror matches are kind of... With most decks I play, obviously I know how to win the mirror match most of the times. But with Lava, it's... It to me doesn't feel like a very skillful mirror match. I feel like... Of course, you have to know what you need to do, but it seems to me, just from what I've learned the last couple of games, the way you play it is just kind of like... You just go balloon at the bridge when your opponent doesn't have Skeleton Dragons in cycle and then just zap the Inferno Drag. At least that's... I don't know if that's the right way to play it, but it's what worked, so... I guess... That's what I'll try next time. 
But, yeah, I don't know. I mean, you guys can see clearly... I mean, I use lava quite a bit, but it's not often I get, like, a lava mirror match. Certainly not two times in a row. So, I don't really... Um... Probably know how to play it, like... Or maybe I just need to dumb down to, you know, a Lava Loon player to be able to play them here match. I don't know. Because maybe those guys had have a bit more experience with Lava Loon than I do. I don't know. But it is something I'd like to work on, you know. Practicing the mirror match. So, I mean, this guy went graveyard really, really aggressively beginning of the game. And typically with graveyard, you don't want to be too aggressive early on, but he did get a lot of damage because of it. I think um, we probably need to give up the right tower. And because we are versus graveyard, I think the situation is better for us anyway in a... Alright, we're 100% giving up the tower. We just spent 8 elixir. We're just going to... I was actually thinking we could arrow it, but I think the better play would be playing skeleton dragons. So then this way, they actually support the lava hound. And then if he uses all his air counters in the left lane, I can probably just go for a... Ah, that's... Alright, here's the plan. We're going to balloon... And then minor this musk. We get death damage. I don't know if that's tower. It's going to be pretty close. Alright, yep, GG. I think we in this position are in a great, just a great spot to win because I think it's really difficult for him to get damage with our king helping out now. He's going to play skelly drags for sure because I just arrowed, at least I assume so he's going to soon. Maybe not. I was expecting it because we did just use our arrows. We can Lava Hound a little further back because the Inferno Drag is getting distracted. I'll go Skeleton Dragons. He's going to go for a Graveyard. I'm going to defend this with 3 Elixir instead of 5 because I don't really need to play Barbarians. Because the only tank he had down was a Bar Barrel. This should probably be good game. There's no way he's stopping the balloon from getting a connection, and I think he even gets a second connection. So, really good matchup for us. This deck does fairly well against all graveyard decks, I would say. Maybe it's a little difficult to beat, you know, graveyard. Uh, I'm trying to think of, like, what a hard graveyard deck would be to beat. Maybe a graveyard goblin cage cycle one, or with bomb tower. Maybe if they have, like, musk and baby dragon, it's a little bit more difficult. And like the goblin cage and if they have a fast cycle they could maybe screw you over in single but i think overall it's not too hard to beat so we played let me uh i think did i start here i think it was here maybe when i started one two three four five so six games we ended up winning four of the six games and actually the only two games we lost were mirror matchups although this guy did have fireball which probably helped him a bit because it gives pushback against the balloon fireball for the barbarians as well and it insta kills the skeleton dragons but um definitely the mirror match seems to be the only one we need to work a little bit on um but really solid deck pretty easy to use and definitely recommend it if you guys are just looking for an easy deck to use on ladder or in uh grand challenges because i don't think it like, once you get the idea of the deck down, it's really not too hard to play. But that's going to be it for the video. Make sure to like the video if you guys enjoyed it. Subscribe if you're not, uh, subscribe if you're not subscribed already. And let me know what decks you guys want to see next. Thanks again. Until next time, guys.